In this video, I'm gonna cover the top 10 mistakes that SaaS startups should avoid. I'm gonna walk through the most common mistakes I see from both new and experienced SaaS founders. I'm Rob Walling. I'm a startup founder with multiple exits, author of three books about building startups, and an investor in more than 100 companies. Mistake number one is building something that no one cares about. Cannot count the number of times I've seen a SaaS founder go off into their basement for six months and build something they think the world wants without any external validation, without any idea if anyone will pay them money for it. And maybe they want it, Maybe it's for them and they're scratching their own itch, but they've done no validation that anyone else in the world will be willing to use this or anyone else will be willing to pay for it. And they've done no validation that they can reach those people in any kind of a sustainable way. It's perhaps the most common mistake that I see and it's one you should avoid. Mistake number two is underpricing your product. Pricing is the biggest leverage in SaaS. Recurring revenue is this amazing cheat code that we get for free because SaaS is a subscription business. But the issue that I see is many founders will undervalue not only what their product does, but they undervalue the time they've invested. And they look around at the rest of the competitive landscape and think to themselves, if I basically clone a product and I underprice by 10, 20, 30%, that will be enough to get customers. And usually that's not the case. Most businesses factor price into their decision making, but it's not the sole factor. And I think oftentimes we bring this consumer price sensitive mindset to a business context. And in business, price is just one of many factors. And in fact, if a business can ensure that they will get better results by paying more money, they will. A lot of consumers will not do that. And oftentimes, being as expensive or even more expensive than your competitors can offer up an advantage in terms of the signal that it sends about the quality of your brand. Mistake number three is trying to be a little too innovative. There are so many opportunities in B2B SaaS that are basically a simple twist on an existing product or a refresh of an old clunky competitor that people are tired of, that hasn't been refreshed in 10 years and has an old user interface. Tons of opportunity in these spaces. But many SaaS founders look at the Silicon Valley model of needing to be this massively innovative, disruptive force that's gonna be worth a billion or $10 billion. And if that's your goal to get there, then yeah, it's the likelihood is you're gonna to have to do something that didn't exist before. You think about Facebook as a social network, there were other social networks around, but Facebook was the one that, that you know, gained the traction. And Uber was, for the most part, it wasn't the first ride sharing app, but it, you know, it was the one that was the winner take all. Well, in SaaS, it isn't winner take all. In almost all spaces, you can have amazingly profitable and fast growing SaaS companies that are the second or the third or even the fourth player in a space if the space is big enough. So don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel or build something amazing. If a business is using Excel to solve a problem today, that's an opportunity. And if your SaaS app, is gonna replace that, it doesn't need to be super complex and fancy. It probably just needs to be, you know, a bit better than that Excel spreadsheet and, you know, enable communication and enable people to get it done a little faster. The fourth mistake is expecting that a good product will sell itself. So many founders think that their idea is so innovative or that it is so much better than the current examples, pen and paper, Excel, or a competitor, that it's just gonna market itself, right? That it, it's not going to need anyone to go out and A, let people know it exists, and then B, convince people that it is actually a better option. And so just keep in mind, if you're gonna start a SaaS app, it requires marketing and it requires sales. Don't use companies like Apple or Basecamp as examples of these companies that they just built it and people came, right? They built it and suddenly they had customers. There are so many reasons why those are exceptions to the rule that you will have to market and sell your product. That's the way 99.9% .9 of products are sold today. And in fact, if you think Apple doesn't do marketing, it's because their marketing is so good, it doesn't look like marketing. Mistake number five, within the business, it's working on the easy things. So if you're a designer, why not just keep continually redesigning your homepage to make it better? If you're good on a microphone, why not start a podcast that builds an audience that maybe you can sell your SaaS to? If you're a developer, build more features. These are the easy things. These are the things that are your comfort zone and it's where you want to live in that business. Hard things are things like grinding on a new marketing approach, analyzing, testing, and improving your marketing funnel, doing sales demos, asking for the sale. Things that make you uncomfortable that actually grow the business are the things that you should be working on. And I do see a lot of founders working on the easy slash fun things. And that is not a great way 
to grow a business. In a startup, every week is like a month and every month is like a quarter. Mistake number six is moving slowly. The cadence of shipping features and getting marketing approaches out the door and getting new blog posts written and getting content marketing and SEO and ad campaigns and optimizing your funnel. These things have to be so much faster than probably any day job you've had at, you know, if you've worked at, for the government or at a Fortune 1000 company, these entities move pretty slowly. And in a startup, you can't move slowly because your competition is not moving slowly. And one of the main advantages you have as an early stage SaaS startup is that you you can move so much faster than that competition. You cannot beat them head to head. They have more resources, more money, more developers. But if you have big incumbents, one of your chief advantages is moving quickly. So don't squander it by making this mistake of moving too slow. Mistake number seven is waiting too long to hire. I get it. I'm a bootstrapper. I bootstrapped all the SaaS companies that I launched. But even then, I hired out support within a few months of launching them. And then I hired out development, even though I was a developer, within six months after that. Waiting too long to hire straps you to the business so that it, not only does it become a job, but you, you can't move as quickly as you'd like. See mistake six that I just mentioned. I find that some founders are resistant to giving up I guess it's control or they think that no one can do a particular job as good as they can. And maybe they're right. But if you hang on to everything for the life of your company, you're going to be constraining the growth dramatically. You're going to work too many hours. You're going to burn out. And frankly, it's more fun to do as a team. There was a time when I really wanted, I thought I wanted to start startups as a solo person. And I did. And in fact, I got pretty lonely, got pretty boring. And I got tired of grinding on support tickets and doing things that frankly are below your pay grade as a founder. So as a founder, think about how soon can I hire support out? Even if it requires being a developer or being more technical, you can find people who are technical enough to do support. And even if you think it's being close to the customer, which it is, you can find people who will pass along those notes and who will communicate to you the important things so that you can stay in close contact with your customers. Mistake number eight is fundraising too early. You'll hear me say, build your business, instead of your slide deck. The best slide deck is traction, it's MRR. And I see folks coming out with an idea and a sketch on a sheet of paper and they're looking to raise funds. And the, the hard part is if you are able to raise funds at that point, you are very likely to burn through those funds before you have any type of traction and be able to raise at a higher valuation. So if you decide that you are not gonna bootstrap long-term, bootstrap it as long as you can and maybe raise some friends and family but think about the fact that in the early days, your company is worth so much less, the less traction you have. So you have to actually sell more of it for the same dollar amounts. In addition, we have seen founders apply to TinySeed, which is the startup accelerator for SaaS bootstrappers that I run. And we see folks applying with two or $3,000 of MRR who have burned through two or $300,000 of funding because they raised it and they felt like they needed to spend it. Having money can be this amazing resource, but it's also easy to waste it and to spend it too fast in an early stage product because you don't know if product market fit is going to take you three months or 27 months. More people should think about bootstrapping longer than do today. Funding is not a panacea. It does not solve all the problems that we think it does. You still have to grind it out and get to product market fit. Mistake number nine is not vesting founder equity. This is just a basic startup mistake. I've seen folks where two founders get together, maybe three, they each own the 50 or 33% of that company. They don't vest their equity, meaning they get all the equity up front and they don't have to work in order to earn that equity. And then one founder leaves six months in, 50% of the equity or two founders left with 33 each and there's just someone not working on the business who owns a third of your company. This is pretty much 101 startup advice, but if you're not vesting your equity with your co-founders, you're making a big mistake. I'm gonna get to the 10th mistake I see SaaS founders making in just a second, but if you're enjoying this video, I'd love it if you'd hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. We have amazing content coming out on this channel almost every week. And it's from videos like this that are topical and tactical to conference talks, live streams, all things aimed at SaaS founders. And with that, the 10th mistake is thinking in terms of months, not years. SaaS takes a long time. The cheat code that we get with recurring revenue also brings with it the opposite of a cheat code, which I don't know the word for that, but it's basically that you can't charge $1,000 upfront for your software. Maybe you can charge $30 a month and you get that $1,000 over the course of many, many months. And that makes it hard to grow revenue, right? It's a lot harder than when you could, back in the day, you did downloadable software and you sold it for thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. 
SaaS takes a long time to build up, takes a long time to find product market fit, and you need a lot of customers to get to substantial MRR. And so if you think that you're going to get product market fit in a few months, you're going to get to 10K a month in a few months, you're going to have the success that you want from your SaaS startup in a few months, it's not going to happen. Very, very rare. It's the Cinderella stories where that happens. And frankly, my, I've been known to say there are no Cinderella stories. Expect to invest years into building your SaaS. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video covering the top 10 mistakes that SaaS startups should avoid. I'll see you in the next video.